trusted you. You were supposed to tell me when there was something wrong with my quadcopter. Tell me if it was gonna fry my ESC or fry my motor, fry my flight controller. You were supposed to tell me. And all this time you've been lying to me. I plugged that battery in and you lit up. You told me I'd screwed up. And I went and I tore that quadcopter apart and there was nothing wrong with it. And I plugged in the battery and it powered up just fine. There was no smoke. So what I want to know is, why? Why did you do it? Who got to you? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. All three of the things on the bench in front of me today are smoke stoppers in some form or another. This one's made from a taillight bulb. This one's also made from a taillight bulb, but has a few other options like the ability to use the high beam or the low beam or 4S or 6S voltage. And this one is made from solid state components, electronic fuses, and has a few additional options, which we'll see in the course of this video. And what we're talking about in the video today is a common way that people misinterpret the information that the smoke stopper is giving them, making them think there's a problem in their quadcopter when there isn't. But before we get to that, let's just briefly recap how a smoke stopper works. So here we've got a 4S LiPo and you know enough about LiPos to know that if I took these tweezers and I stuck them in the prongs of this LiPo, really bad stuff would happen. Because when you short circuit a LiPo, lots of current and smoke and fire and sparks and bad things happen. So we're gonna take this, this is the V-Fly Short Saver V2. It is a basically a smoke stopper and it's actually got an on off switch. This is super handy if you're trying to like bind your receiver because you can plug your battery in, then push the button and now the quadcopter is alive. Now we have voltage coming out of this XT60. And if I take my tweezer and I stick it in there, absolutely nothing bad happens because the short saver detects that a short circuit has happened and it goes into a fault condition and cuts off the battery. Now this light bulb works the exact same way, sort of. The reason the light bulb works as a smoke stopper is that it has a resistive element on the inside and the purpose of the resistive element is to make light. But it so happens that that resistive element also restricts current flow. So if we plug this in, and I'm actually gonna get this clamp meter down. I can use this to measure the current flowing through the battery. I'm gonna put that into DC mode and zero it out. And I'm going to short circuit these prongs. And you can see that the light bulb lights up and we have about three amps flowing. Now three amps is certainly not nothing, but oftentimes that will be, not be enough to smoke whatever it is, this smoke your flight controller, smoke your ESC. It limits the current to a safe level and the light bulb is a convenient indicator that something ain't right. Now to demonstrate the problem that people often have with smoke stoppers, I've got this. This is the Catalyst Machine Works America 9 inch and it has 28 16 sized motors and great big motors tend to accentuate this problem that we're gonna demonstrate. So I'm gonna plug in my smoke stopper and I'm gonna plug in my quadcopter and let's see what happens. Ready? Here we go. Oh, what happened? It tripped. The smoke stopper tripped. Is this quadcopter messed up? Is it short circuited? If we plug it in, is it gonna light on fire? Nope. Fine. So why did the smoke stopper trip? The reason it tripped is that these devices don't detect short circuits. Of course they do, that's their whole point. No, these devices detect excess current flow. And when you have a short circuit, you will have excess current flow and that excess current flow will then smoke your electronics. But current flow also happens normally. In fact, if current wasn't flowing, your whole quadcopter wouldn't power up. So how do you tell the difference? And the way that you tell the difference is basically you just pick an amount of current and anything over that amount of current causes the smoke stopper to trip. 
So here on the back of the V-Fly, you can see a marking and it has either a one amp or a two amp current threshold, which can be selected by pressing the button. Uh, and we were on the one amp current threshold and it just turns out that those motor beeps, you know, the do-do-do-do-do, they just happen to pull more than one amp and they tripped the threshold. We saw that this light bulb uh, on a 4S battery, so that's about 16, 17 volts, was allowing about three amps to flow. And here we come to an actually significant difference between this electronic style of smoke stopper and the light bulb style, which is that when the electronic smoke stopper trips, it cuts off entirely. Whereas the light bulb style will light up while still allowing two or three amps to flow, depending on what the input voltage is. Higher input voltage is higher current. By the way, these light bulbs are good for up to about 4S, on 5S and 6S, they're made, they're made for 12 volt car batteries, so they just blow on, tw on 5S and 6S. But on 3S or 4S, this light bulb will let about two to three amps flow, even when there's a fault condition. And that means that if we were to plug that, uh, well, we're not gonna do it because that's a 6S quad, but if we were to plug in a quadcopter with a light bulb, we would see that the light bulb would light up, boop, 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 but then probably the quadcopter would stay powered up and you wouldn't be so confused. With a light bulb smoke stopper, the main time to worry that something is wrong is if it just lights up blazing like the sun and stays there. But on these, uh, but on these solid state smoke stoppers, as soon as anything trips it, even for a fraction of a second, the whole quadcopter shuts down. You know, these light bulbs are not actually 100% reliable either. These come in different wattages. The one that I recommend using, it's about 25, 26 watts. I don't remember the exact specification. If you buy a lower wattage bulb, it will light up at lower current. And I've seen cases where people like just plugging in your video transmitter causes this light bulb to light up. They've used a too low of a wattage bulb and the video transmitter, the whole quadcopter is pulling maybe an amp at idle and the video transmitter being plugged in is what puts it over and causes this to light up. So even if you've got something that's lit up solid, it might not 100% mean there's a fault. The best thing to do would be to find a way to measure the actual current being pulled from the battery and that would tell you whether you're in a fault condition and also just buy the right wattage of bulb or just buy one of these. They're a little bit more versatile. So how do you know if it's safe to plug your quadcopter in or if when you plug it in, the smoke's going to come out. Well, if you plug it in and it goes do 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 and then shuts off, chances are if it was going to smoke, it would have already smoked or tried to smoke before the ESC got to the do do do, right? If you plug it in uh, and it just immediately trips, that's pretty likely to be a fault condition. Although, it could just be that very first motor beep is tripping it. So you still don't know 100%. A good test is to get your multimeter out and measure continuity between the two prongs of the XT60. And if continuity is there, then you have a fault. Continu there might be a small beep if you have a capacitor as the capacitor charges, but in general, you should not get continuity between the prongs of the XT60. So there was a little beep just from the capacitor. But the multimeter is also not 100% reliable because there can be conditions where like if you've got bad firmware on an ESC, it may not smoke the motor until you raise the throttle. And so a multimeter test done just with, a, with no battery plugged in would, might not detect that. There are also some fault conditions that a smoke stopper simply cannot protect against. For example, if you have an ESC that is damaged in such a way that it's gonna fry a motor as soon as you throttle up, a smoke stopper can't protect against that because the smoke stopper will always trip when you raise the throttle. Oh, oh yeah, good point. I've had people email me and say, hey, uh, something's wrong with my quad. Yeah, it plugs in just fine, it starts up just fine, but then when I go to fly, it shuts down. The smoke stopper is stopping the current flow from the battery, but the motors can't spin if there's no current flow. You can't fly with a smoke stopper installed. It's always gonna trip when you raise the throttle. So if you've got a situation where the ESC is gonna smoke the motor as soon as you raise the throttle, you're just gonna smoke the motor. You're not gonna protect against that. The takeaway from this is as follows. Smoke stoppers aren't perfect, but they can protect you against some fault conditions, and that means they're very, very worth having. Um, just be aware that the smoke stopper is telling you that current is flowing, 
and then know how to recognize whether that is a fault condition, like a short circuit or a bad ESC, or whether that's just normal current flow. Oh, and by the way, if you want to build this exact box with the switches and everything, I got a tutorial for how to do it. I designed this box in a, in a 3D uh, CAD design program. I 3D printed it and then I built it all up. I've got a tutorial for how I did, including the STL files if you want to print the exact box. Uh, link in the video description below. Also, link in the video description to this little guy. This is really good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be without it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.